Chitezi, home to Uganda's largest and only sanitary engineered landfill. This village is located in Imperi in Kawempe Division, north of the outskirts of Kampala, the country's capital and city of millions. The landfill that is spread over 36 acres of land was designed in 1994 and constructed between 1995 and 1996. It is one of the few engineered sanitary landfills in Africa and in fact the only one of its kind in East Africa. From the moment you set foot in Kitezi village, you will notice molds of rubbish from paper to plastic and polythene that have been sorted for recycling. When you arrive at the landfill, a mountain of rubbish and a pungent smell will come you to this place. But how did it start? This is Tezi Center Engineered Landfill. Yeah, it was established in 1996 as a dump site by then. Then later on in 2001, it was upgraded into a sanitary engineered landfill. Yeah, so this is the site that receives the municipal solid waste from Kampala district and the nearby suburbs. Yeah, so when I talk of the nearby suburbs, basically these upcoming municipalities within Wakiso, like Nansana, Machindia Sabagabo, uh, Chira, Kasangati, yeah. So 93% of the waste comes from Kampala and only 7% comes outside of Kampala. Waste management is a continuous challenge in Uganda from personal to industrial disposal. It's not uncommon to find waste in gutters, market areas, alleys and roads. The solid waste that is collected from the five divisions of Kampala City is dumped at the landfill located 12 kilometers from the city center. To this challenge, Kitezi was created to combat the waste management issues in Uganda. For the last 25 years, it has been and continues to be the solid waste disposal site. The disposed waste comprises organics 83.5%, metal 8.6%, paper 5.4%, plastic 1.6%, glass 0.9%. Over the years, the waste disposal has increased from 1,400 to 1,700 tons daily. 93% of the waste that comes here is from Kampala district and 7% is the nearby suburbs, the likes of Nansana municipality, uh, Chira municipality, Kasanga town council and much in the suburb. So they make up the 7%. So on an average, every day we receive 180 trucks. And it depends on seasons. Like in rainy seasons, the, 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 the number of trucks increase to like 200. We receive municipal solid waste. So municipal solid waste, that is waste from residential areas and commercial areas. So when we talk of municipal solid waste, the waste you generate at your home and these businesses, not industries. So that is the only waste we receive here. So um, the other type of waste, we categorize it as hazardous and we don't receive it at this site. For example, all industrial waste. So industrial waste like uh, loofings, those industries in Namave, what they produce is hazardous. So that hazardous waste is supposed to be taken to, to Nakasongola. There's another uh, licensed landfill to handle hazardous waste, including medical waste. We don't receive medical waste here. It is also hazardous. It has to be taken to Nakasongola. On a daily basis, over 100 trucks from private and government entities dump trash from all over Kampala Metropolitan, the neighboring towns. Namgabu Abdil, Home Clean, Binit are some of the notable trucks you will see come in and out of this site. These are in partnership with the Kampala Capital City Authority, the governing body that is in charge of keeping the city and its surrounding areas free of waste. The law of correction of garbage is managed by KCCA. So we have various stakeholders um, from the source 
up to here. So this is the final stage for garbage. So at the correction site, we have the uh, solid, uh, solid waste officers for KCCA that work hand in hand with other private waste correctors. Yeah, in 2017, KCCA contracted um, private waste collectors, so they were brought on board. We call them the concessionaires. So they assist KCCA to increase the capacity in the generation. Yeah, so we have three companies that were contracted in Kampala. That is Nabugabo Apdir Joint Ventures working in the Rubaga Division and the Central Division. We have Home Clean Uganda Limited working in the all of March in the division, part of Rubaga Division and part of Kampala Central. Then we have the Kampala Solid Waste Management Consortium working in the all of Nakawa Division and the Kawempe Division. So those people collect garbage from people at a fee and then they bring for dumping here at the site. So this site is entirely managed by KCCA. The mysteries of Chitezi's great size arise from the slow decay process that is a result of unsorted waste which includes polythene bags, plastic, organic waste, metal, paper and other household waste. At Chitezi, you will find tens of young men and women searching from the garbage, looking for various items to reclaim from the rubbish molds. The term used here is salvagers who scratch through the molds dropped by trucks in search for different items from which they make a living. I want to know that 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 I want Ova ngabasolo kuisa wa kasente kwa sevi inga ngabasolo kula bidia abe wa wa balala sawa zinu avali register deveni na avali muruna ana baso kama kubanga ni na baso taz befuwe tu ita baso nzuri katika wole ingera kusa idiri au ya kutaminga adi akave raka soft fikatu tu ita raka softi ne katu ita HD katu ita kwa demu mula ita nga scrap yeviuma then ababu sortinga wao. To the outside world, this is garbage. To the salvagers here, it's a gold pit from which they make a living and are able to educate their children and provide for their families. Some search for metal, others plastic, polythene, food, and other organic waste that are resold to be recycled to companies or individuals with animals for the organic waste or persons in the recycling business. As they run after the moving trucks that come to dump the waste, one thing is clear. This to them is not a lowly job, but one that puts food on the table. Everyone at this landfill has a role to play and they are marked by those specific roles. The pay is daily and is dependent on how much one is able to collect and sell for the day. Biba balon zivole ingera sa ideri kumamoto kani kumashini. Abo mulimu guwabe. Balon da ye bintu ye bivyo na yonda ne babide tanga uoli okubiraba. Ne bate eka uamu. Abo etu itaba pikas. Ne tuta kumulitu woku vili. Bami ita sota. Sota yoyo asunsula. Na separate inga. Ntibino chidomola. Ono ruenzoli. Kano kavera. Ino boxes ino kutia. Oyo gutumu ita pika. Ne tuta kumulitu woku satu. Omuntu wakusatu kwa Twitter trader. Trader ya jia na agula kuyo. Na agula kupika. Tui inawo e, e nyambala ya mirundi ya satu. Walo vola haba ngabamba de it is like a, o, ngabamba de blue. Bona ulgola haba yamba de blue. Even if t-shirt, oba overall, oba tawo, avo, bebapika. 
bola bata bamba de green ngolaba ayamba de town ya green be ba trader echi sinzira ku muntu ku nkola ye nga bola bibule mateka mu net ye ay wali ayizo kufuna akasangu wali ayizo kufuna omutwalo omunene nafu na yogo mu echi tondo ya chi which means afuna akasangu ja musanga mu abili mugumu omwezi afunya omutwale mitwala asatu as the authority, KCCA has no policy that allows the salvagers to be at the site. However, they allow them in support of the community as a way of making a living and hence have undertaken different measures to work with them who then help in recycling since as an organization, KCCA does not deal in recycling. Here, um. Basically, we don't do any recycling at the site. So, um, though we have some kind of informal recycling, so at this site we have a community of waste pickers called the salvagers. So they are 800 in number. So those people are not employees of KCCA. So we are just into a mutual understanding with them. So these are people from the neighborhood of low income status whom we grant access to our landfill. As you are aware that landfills are restricted access by law. They don't allow in people. But for our case, um, we let people, our neighbors, to have access to the landfill and a, a livelihood. So, those are the people that help us w with the informal recycling. So those people go and pick what they deem is variable. So others pick uh, food waste for piggery. Others pick um, uh, polythene, cavera, HD. Others pick scrap. Others pick plastic bottles to which they sell to outside the people at a fee they want. So what they pick is entirely theirs. We don't charge them for rent, we don't charge them for taxi. So those are the people that help us to do the, the recycling, but it is not the normal recycling that a vehicle comes here, dumps, then we separate everything. We don't do that. The way you put your garbage on vehicle at your home is the way it will finally be landfilled which is not a good thing in terms of waste management. On a daily basis, trucks with lots of rubbish make way to the landfill. As the waste is dumped, a grader is there to level the rubbish as the salvagers scramble and petition for it. This, however, comes with risk of accidents from the trucks, the medical or industrial waste that may make its way into the solid waste. For the salvagers, the struggle is also found from lack of shelter from the rain or sunburn. These working conditions strain their desires to work, but regardless, they persevere. Machine imposing a food day with Kubanga, but a Jacola, Nangan Basigan Apology, Cocola. In Cuba, no Musana. A ranga was set at Twina Yonti, in Cuba, we Tonya, Twina, to gain or could look it up, then to gain a carry one school office in a Twila Ponga to Gama, Omsana, we go to a chain, you to Twina, you to Twina Yonti, to Joko Vera, Kubanga land field, some time when Tino was take out tent, at a Jacuaga locos, space steady, won't he, Yaliza, Vingiva, and Tiafi. Almost to Sorok Funanga, and to Avanji, Wabala, and to Isoqua like an accident. Yeah, an accident in Kampala, capital city authority. And since then, it has been business unusual for the city's administration with the vision of a city. We have a tambour in a Jewa distance, maybe to Yamakwezi, and Enga, Vinga, and Tabadi, Awam, Tepulam. These upcoming municipalities like Nansana, um, much in the Saba Gabo, they don't have any dam sites, so all of them bring garbage here. That's why you see our site is is piled up we are almost it is almost full yeah so because of the various pressure of all the solid waste at kitezi only 40 percent is accounted for in the kampala metropolitan area and its surroundings 
This tells a lot when it comes to the waste disposal habit we have as a nation. As the 60% ends up on the roads, the water bodies, water channels and open land spaces. KCCA would hope that with the support of the community, Ugandans would practice proper waste management. There is need to rethink our methods of waste management. We should not look at everything we generate as, uh, as waste, that it should immediately end up to the landfill. No, because then how, how long and how much land shall we demand to, 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 to have our, our waste land filled? Look at this one, 26 years it is full. Moreover, by that time, there are some years where the population was low. But look at the urbanization coupled with the population increase coupled with urbanization, making waste management more complex. It means we are going to create more dump sites and hence demand for more land in all almost upcoming cities. But if we rethink our methods of waste management, then we shall demand less of, of the landfills. Like there is what we call a pollution prevention strategy, where you employ the four allies. One is to reduce on the garbage as much as possible, the, the, the amount of garbage you produce. For example, if you go to a supermarket, you buy bread, why would you demand for a braca cavera if you have a vehicle? Couldn't you just carry your bread into the vehicle? Because when you reach home, braca cavera immediately becomes waste, and then it would be necessitating it to be taken to the landfill. Two, if you can't reduce, can you do the reuse? Reuse the products. If you have, maybe you buy a biscuit container after eating the biscuits, make it into a sugar bowl so that you extend life without it going to the landfill. Then you can you do the recover. You recover some waste like what our waste pickers are doing. They are recovering what you call waste. Yeah, but to them it is a resource. Then if you can't do that, then you do the recycle turn the plastic bottle into other valuable items. Then we shall demand less, or we shall put less pressure on our landfills. Yeah, but um, the message is uh, sinking slowly. As you've already seen in the past, when you hear people who have worked at this landfill, they will tell you but that nowadays, the, the landfill is no longer rich like the way it used to be, meaning in the past everything used to end up at the landfill and hence the waste pickers were very happy because they would receive tons of variables. But nowadays we have uh, garbage loaders, as you've seen them. When they are loading garbage from your homes, there is one on top of a vehicle who is picking up things from the waste and putting in a sack. They call them giants. Yeah, then when they are transporting that garbage to Chitezi, there are other minor transfer stations along the route to Chitezi. For example, if you've been from Umperere, you can see there is an association between the businesses along the road with the waste. So when they are coming this side, they offload those giants along the road and then they get cash. Like there is what we call a pollution prevention strategy where you employ the four allies. One is to reduce on the garbage as much as possible, the, the, the amount of garbage you produce. For example, if you go to a supermarket, you buy bread, why would you demand for a braca cavera if you have a vehicle? Couldn't you just carry your bread into the vehicle? Because when you reach home, Braca Cavera immediately becomes waste, and then it would be necessitating it to be taken to the landfill. Two, if you can't reduce, can you do the reuse? Reuse the products. If you have, maybe you buy a biscuit container. After eating the biscuits, make it into a sugar bowl so that you extend life without it going to the landfill. Then you can you do the recover. 
you recover some waste like what our waste pickers are doing. They are recovering what you call waste. Yeah, but to them it is a resource. Chitezi landfill is located in a densely populated area. It is very close to inhabited areas. Some houses are less than 20 meters away from meter high piles of rubbish. People living near the landfill have complained that it has made their place inhabitable and their land has lost value. These conflicts stem from the bad odor, leachate which pollutes water resources, scattering of waste from dumping sites by wind and scavengers like marabustocks and other nuisances such as vermin, mosquitoes and flies. This landfill is said to have been projected to work till 2011, but works are still underway to create a new one. Until then, Chitezi remains the only landfill capable of handling Kampala's West.